Sophia Lin always thought she was my sugar daddy. Even though I never spent her money, after her first love came back, she pushed me into another woman's room. Help your sister close the deal, and your sister will reward you. But when I really started hanging out with that woman, Sophia broke down. I didn't say anything. Who allowed you to change your heart? I accompanied Sophia at the KTV until late at night. She hooked my chin, and I uncomfortably dodged away. For some reason, she always liked to hook my chin, like teasing a puppy or a kitten, even though I am much taller than her petite frame. But she never did this to Jorge. She blushed just touching Jorge's hand, even though Jorge was always indifferent to her, even though I was her boyfriend. Sophia hooked my chin, Gabriel, how many years have you been with me? I brushed her hand away, we have been dating for three years. Sophia's best friend teased from the side, oh, the little puppy is angry. Sophia, you should buy him something to cheer him up. Sophia also laughed, what do you want? I shook my head and said nothing. I was tired of explaining. Even though I had been with Sophia for three years without taking a penny from her, the card was neatly placed in her drawer. Everything Sophia bought for me, I kept, untouched, only once. Sophia gave me an album with her childhood drawings, and that album, I kept. I would lie in bed and look at it when I had nothing to do, but Sophia still thought of me as the little puppy she kept by her side, not her boyfriend. She snuggled into my arms like a kitten, finding a comfortable position, drawing circles on my chest with her hand, do you know? Jorge is back. I froze for a moment. Jorge. Sophia's first love. Sophia even called his name when we were together. Since she called the wrong name, I never stayed at her place again. Today was the first time seeing her in half a month. She rubbed her face against me like a kitten. Gabriel. This time Jorge and I must have a result. My hand stiffened. Still holding Sophia. My throat dry. Stomach acid surged up. Burning my heart. It took me a while to recover. Then I coughed dryly. So. What do you mean? Sophia handed me a card and rubbed against me again, Gabriel, we might be at the end, I looked at the card and said nothing, I gave my all to Sophia for these three years, even though everyone thought I was after her money, I never explained, I ran to embrace her in the rain because she was afraid of thunder, I took a plane to get a handful of snow for her in a snowstorm because she said she wanted to see snow, but I later found out that it snowed heavily in the city where Jorge was that day, what she wanted to see was not the snow I brought back, I worried about her stomach problems, her drinking habits, and her work pressure. I took care of her, exhausted myself, even angered my father, making him think I was too caught up in romance, but I still couldn't compare to Jorge, couldn't compare to Jorge, a simple statement, my stomach hurt, I swallowed and raised the whiskey in front of me, tilting my head back to drink it down, my stomach hurt even more, but the pain made me feel a little better, I raised my hand and pushed Sophia away, all right, I smiled at Sophia, as you wish, Sophia blinked, seemingly not expecting me to agree so readily. Gabriel, I'll help you find a job. I shook my head and refused, standing up and patting my clothes. No need. Sophia, all the things you gave me in these three years, whether it's the card, the watch, or the limited edition sneakers, I've put them all in the safe. The password is your birthday. I turned to leave. Sophia grabbed the corner of my shirt. Gabriel, wait. Her delicate face looked up at me. You don't seem to be upset about the breakup. I said nothing and turned to leave, as I was about to walk out of the private room. Sophia caught up holding her phone, no one was singing now, the room was quiet, and I could even hear Jorge's voice on the other end of the phone, make him go to the room, and then I'll believe you two have no lingering feelings, Sophia hung up the phone, her face expressionless, her beautiful fox-like eyes slightly narrowed, a sign of her anger, she pointed to my chest, Gabriel, I'll ask you one more time, why did you agree to the breakup so quietly, aren't you upset, I lowered my head and laughed, isn't it you who wanted to break up, I'm following your wish, why is it suddenly wrong? Sophia narrowed her eyes again. After a while, she smiled. Fine. Very fine. She took out a card and threw it at me. This is the key card to a room upstairs. There's a woman inside. I need you to make her happy. So my negotiation tomorrow goes smoothly. Do it well. And I'll give you a substantial breakup fee. Otherwise, you get nothing. Her fingers slid across my face. Her lips curled up. But her eyes were icy. My stomach hurt again. And my heart ached too. I grabbed her wrist. Sophia. What do you take me for? As, Sophia smiled at me. A big toy. If it feels good, why not let my friends use it too? I looked at Sophia for a long time. This was the woman I had loved for so long. Even her best friend felt it was inappropriate and stood up to stop her. Enough. If you're breaking up, do it properly. But Sophia stubbornly handed me the key card, going or not. I took a deep breath, feeling desolate inside. I looked down at the card for a long time and then smiled, going. I took the card and turned to leave. Sophia called after me, Gabriel, you. I stopped, 
waiting for her to say something, but she ultimately said nothing. Not a single word, I sighed bitterly. Just this one last time, as she wished, then I would sever all ties and never look back. I took the elevator upstairs and ran into the hotel manager. Seeing me, he quickly made way. Gab is here, is there something Chairman Chi wants to convey? I shook my head, personal matter. Yes, the card Sophia gave me was for our family hotel, including Sophia. Everyone was an executive in our family group. It's just that I hadn't joined the group yet, so most people didn't know. I didn't tell Sophia because I feared the disparity in status would taint our love. I even knew that the room was occupied by one of our group's major clients because Sophia's negotiation rights were secured by my father and me. I took a deep breath and opened the door. The room was dark, with only a dim floor lamp by the sofa. A slender figure was resting on the sofa, with naturally curly hair draped over her chest, wearing a beige cashmere long dress that looked comfortable and fitting. This must be the major client, Diana. Hearing the door open, she opened her eyes, her long, upward slanting eyelids staring at me without blinking. After a while, she smiled, that Sophia, really willing to go all out. She stood up and stretched, I just mentioned casually that she had a little boy toy, and she took it seriously. I lowered my gaze, I'm just looking around. If it was a casual mention, I'll leave. Angry as I was, I didn't want to degrade myself. Diana raised her eyebrows, she didn't force you, did she? Then I can't let you in, I said nothing. Diana frowned, so she did. That's not okay. I don't do such things. You should go back. I nodded and turned to leave. At home. I locked myself in for three days. Three days later, my dad dragged me out, saying he wanted to take me to dinner to build connections for my future business endeavors. When we entered the private room, I immediately saw a familiar figure at the table, Diana. Seeing me, she raised her eyebrows. Her cherry lips moved, but she said nothing. She just smiled meaningfully. I knew she was mocking me. But I had to pretend not to notice and warmly greeted her. No matter how upset I was, I still had to deal with business clients. Diana raised her glass to me, Mr. Chi, to you. There aren't many pure-hearted young men like you these days. She smiled with narrowed eyes, clearly mocking my naivety. I also knew that in our circle, the guys often dated models or socialites, always being the ones to break it off, never the other way around. I was the odd one, trying to be someone's boy toy and failing. I bitterly smiled, raised my glass and drank it all, Chairman Chen is always right. I refilled my glass and toasted Diana, sorry to have embarrassed myself, the alcohol burned my sorrow, too harsh, making my eyes water, my dad, who always spoiled me, quickly patted my back, look at you, drink slowly, don't let Chairman Chen laugh at you, I coughed and wiped my eyes, smiling, yeah, I guess I'm quite the joke, I nodded to Diana, sorry for the laugh, Diana stared at my red eyes for a moment, then nodded without a word, for the rest of the night, she didn't toast me again, but her gaze was much gentler. After dinner, my dad asked me to take Diana back to the hotel. We sat in silence in the car, Diana looking out the window the entire way. As we neared the hotel, she turned to look at me, I'm sorry, I was puzzled, sorry for what, you didn't do anything. Diana shook her head, I was mocking you in my mind. But then I realized I was mocking your pain, I shouldn't mock someone in pain, I'm sorry. I lowered my gaze and shook my head, no need to apologize, I deserve it. As the car pulled up to the hotel entrance, I got out and opened the door for Diana, I won't accompany you upstairs, but Diana looked at me and said, don't you want to have another drink? She smiled and narrowed her pretty, almond-shaped eyes, I brought whiskey, I hesitated, it's quite late now, she was a major client, and I didn't want to refuse directly, besides, she was the one in danger, inviting me upstairs, Diana laughed again, I'm not afraid of you, so why are you afraid of me? Though she was smiling. There was a serious look in her eyes, I've been hurt too, we're just two wounded souls. I was touched by the flash of pain in her eyes, if there were a mirror now, my eyes would probably show the same sorrow. I closed the car door, then I'd be honored. These past few days, every time I closed my eyes, I dreamed of Sophia's cold eyes, the room card she threw at me, and her with Jorge, I felt like I couldn't take it anymore, I really needed a drink to help me forget, forget the outcome of my three years of sincere love. I walked into the lobby with Diana. The lobby manager respectfully approached us, about to speak, but a shocked voice interrupted him, Gabriel. My body tensed. It was Sophia's voice. She sounded surprised, more so. Angry, what are you doing here? I turned and saw Sophia, coming out of the hotel restaurant with a few clients, narrowing her eyes at me. She looked at me and then at Diana beside me, forcing a smile, Chairman Chen, seems my recommendation suits your taste. Diana, smiling, linked her arm through mine and nodded at Sophia. I quite like him. I was stunned by Diana's actions. So was Sophia. Her face turning pale. Her voice unsteady. 
Chairman Chen, could I borrow Gabriel for a minute? I suddenly remembered I have something to ask him. Diana looked at me, seeing that I didn't refuse. Shrugged, just two minutes. We are in a hurry to go upstairs. Sophia bit her lip and beckoned me. I didn't move. Sophia gritted her teeth. Gabriel, could you come here? Her delicate face was full of anger, the coldness in her eyes growing. I took a deep breath and walked over to her. I didn't know what she wanted to say to me at this point. It couldn't be an apology. Sophia pulled me a few steps away. Her fingers icy. Her face darkened. Teeth clenched. Gabriel, don't you feel dirty? I was stunned. I could accept anything she said, but calling me dirty, I couldn't accept. How am I dirty? I pursed my lips and asked her. Sophia's eyes burned with cold fire. I thought you wouldn't really go upstairs. Did you really go? She scrutinized my face, my neck, looking as if she wanted to examine my entire body. What did you do? Huh? I looked at her angry expression, suddenly feeling both surprised and amused. I looked down at her trembling hands and asked, didn't you tell me to go? Sophia, I was just following your orders. I was angry at you. I was just angry. The fire in Sophia's eyes burned brighter, reddening her eyes. How was I to know you would really go and sleep with someone else? Gabriel, don't you have any shame? Sophia, an executive, usually hid her emotions. She always treated me with indifference, often teasing me more than anything else. But in this moment, her eyes were red, lips trembling with anger, like a child whose favorite toy was taken away. It added a touch of reality, a touch of the genuine Sophia from her childhood. I closed my eyes and sighed, Sophia, I have to go, we are done. I turned and walked back to Diana, letting her take my arm as we got in the elevator. Behind me, Sophia's voice, low and furious, called out, Gabriel. I paused for a moment, but then walked on without looking back. Diana and I drank a lot of alcohol. I didn't speak, and she didn't speak either. We just silently poured drinks, silently toasted, and silently drank. I looked out the window, thinking about the past three years. She looked out the window too, lost in her own thoughts. After a long time, a hint of tears appeared in her eyes, and she smiled at me. Why are there so many people in this world who don't know how to cherish what they have? She smiled bitterly, they trample on others' genuine feelings. Don't they feel any sadness? I shook my head and drank another glass. Diana turned her head to look at the city lights outside, the tears in her eyes forming a single drop that rolled down her face. We drank for five hours. From evening until the early morning, drunk, I carried the sleeping Diana to bed, covered her with a blanket, and staggered downstairs. As I reached the lobby, I heard a voice calling me, Gabriel. I turned and saw Sophia, curled up on the lobby sofa, wrapped in a shawl, her hair messy, her makeup smudged. She called to me with red eyes, Gabriel, I've been waiting for you all night. Why did you just come down now? She walked towards me, I've thought about it carefully. You're not that kind of person. Nothing happened between you and her, right? I rubbed my temples, unable to speak. The headache from the alcohol was splitting, accompanied by the pain in my heart. Sophia was staring at me, seemingly unwilling to give up without an answer. I suddenly felt like laughing. In the past, it was always me waiting for her sleepless nights, waiting for her to say she was working overtime, but the office building was dark, and in her best friend's social media, Jorge was toasting Sophia with a smile, once, twice, again and again, until I lost hope, and now she waited all night for me. Why not earlier? I laughed. Sophia, does this still concern you? Is there any need for explanations between us? Sophia hesitated, seemingly searching for a reason, and after a moment, she said, you owe me money, so why can't I ask? I pressed my temples, feeling disappointment once again. Disappointment piled high enough becomes despair. I had despaired of Sophia. I held my forehead, suppressing the headache. Sophia, if you cared about me at all, you would have realized that in these three years, I haven't spent a penny of your money, I haven't touched your card, but Sophia didn't believe it, then what about your clothes, your watch, your bag, those are my own money, I interrupted, losing all patience, Sophia, everyone around you flatters you for money, so you think everyone is like that, but I'm not, I told her word by word, I'm different from them, Sophia bit her lip, Gabriel, how about we talk again, I shook my head, talk about what, Sophia, I decided to tear open the old wound and make it clear, Shall we talk about how every time Jorge calls, you push me away to find him? Or how every time Jorge returns, you work overtime endlessly, even though the office is dark, and even the security is asleep? Or how, at Jorge's word, you wouldn't even give me the mercy of a proper breakup, pushing me into another woman's room like a toy? Even if it was in the past, even if I had let go, I still trembled all over. Those memories turned into steel needles, piercing my heart, making it hard to breathe. I took a deep breath and asked Sophia, so, what do you want to talk about? I pulled out a mocking smile, 
Or have you decided to leave Jorge and want me back? Sofia was silent. She suddenly started crying. Gabriel. She covered her face. I can't do it. I've waited for him too long. I closed my eyes. The pain in my heart tore at my insides. I heard my own voice. Indifferent and distant. Fine. Then just leave me alone. Okay. Don't care who I drink with. Whose room I enter. Whose bed I sleep in. From now on. It has nothing to do with you. Sophia sobbed quietly. I turned and walked towards the door. The cold early morning wind was piercing. Sobering me up and blowing away the last bit of reluctance. When I got home. I drunkenly searched through my bedroom. After searching for a long time. I found an album. It was the only thing of Sophia's that I had kept. Sophia used to draw beautifully when she was a child. And the album was filled with vivid drawings of two children. A pretty and lively little girl. And a silent little boy. The little girl held the little boy's hand wherever they went. Never letting go. Even when they were bullied by older kids. They held hands and refused to separate. The pages of the album had turned yellow. And many pencil lines were blurred. But I still treasured it. Rescuing it from the trash when Sophia was about to throw it away. And I would look through it often. Only when looking at the album could I feel that Sophia had once given me warmth. Once. She had held my hand firmly. Never wanting to let go. Closing the album. I fell asleep with my clothes on. In my dreams. Sophia as a child held my hand and ran away. Then the present Sophia looked at me coldly. I'm tired of you. Let's break up. I slept until 10 in the morning and woke up to several missed calls from my dad. Come to the company at noon. Take Diana out for a walk. Visit some scenic spots. I realized my dad really wanted me to see Diana. In families like ours, marriages are usually arranged. Everyone accepts it. Except for me, who thought I could make it work with Sophia. I always went against my dad. Refusing any arranged dates. Which is why I hadn't been called to work in the company yet. Even now. I didn't want to marry someone I didn't love. Didn't want to have a child just for the sake of it. And then live separate lives after the child was born. I wanted to refuse. But the memory of Diana's tear falling as she looked out the window last night came to mind. That tear fell silently onto the carpet. With Diana's face expressionless. But as the night passed over her almond-shaped eyes. I saw a hint of sorrow. That hint of sorrow made it impossible for me to refuse. So. At noon. I drove to the company. I waited in the lobby. Scrolling through my phone for Diana to come down. As I was scrolling. A pair of beige high heels appeared in my view. Thinking Diana had arrived. I smiled and looked up. I've been waiting for you. But when I looked up, it was Sophia. She was dressed in a professional suit with light makeup. But the dark circles under her eyes couldn't be hidden. Making her beautiful face look exhausted. She looked at me quietly. Gabriel, you came to find me. Right. But what's the point now? That day I called you. And you didn't even turn back. I was stunned. I didn't come to find you. Sophia frowned. What else could you be here for if not to find me? I'm waiting for someone. As soon as I said that, someone tugged at my sleeve. Then that person linked their arm through mine. Smiling, shall we go? Turning my head, I saw it was Diana. Today, she was dressed in denim, her hair in two braids, looking much more lively than the last two times I had seen her. She tilted her head and smiled at me. Aren't you here to take me out? Looking at her smooth forehead and smiling dimples, I suddenly felt the warmth of the sun on my back. I nodded. Let's go. I'll take you to the wetland park first, and then we can go hiking. As Diana and I walked out together, I didn't even notice her holding my arm. But behind us, Sophia shouted, Gabriel, come back. I didn't stop. Sophia's voice was tearful, come back, look at me. I waved my hand back at her, got in my sports car, and drove off with Diana. Many people in the company watched us leave, but Sophia was the most shocked of all. Sophia sent me a WeChat message, where did you get the sports car? Did Diana give it to you? Gabriel, are you with her for money? After a while, she sent another, Gabriel, you're not that kind of person, right? Diana's circle is different from ours. She's just playing with you. I replied. Weren't you just playing too? Sophia didn't respond. Diana took my phone. We're out to have fun. So let's really enjoy it. Why the long face? She looked out the window. There's no sadness that alcohol can't solve. If one drink doesn't work. Have two. I remembered her tear and couldn't help my curiosity. Chairman Chin Jr. It sounds like you have some unresolved past as well. Diana turned her gaze back and smiled at me. She looked at the view of the wetland park and said calmly, my ex-boyfriend didn't know about my family background at first and claimed he loved me deeply. Later, after I took over the family business and refused his unreasonable demands, he hired people to kidnap me, hoping to make a big profit. Then he planned to kill me. I was stunned. After a while, I apologized. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Diana shook her head. It's okay. It's all in the past. She tucked a strand of loose hair behind her ear, but during that time, I relied on alcohol to get through. That's why I suggested you drink. 
I know how painful it is to have your sincere feelings betrayed, she spoke lightly, but I suddenly remembered that Diana was only 26 years old, forced to take on a huge responsibility after her father had a stroke, to be kidnapped by a lover at that time must have been devastating, I hesitated, then patted her shoulder, it's all in the past, I took Diana around to different places, and during a break, I checked my phone and saw Sophia's best friend's post on social media, Sophie is engaged to her love, the picture showed Sophia in the company lobby, reaching out to accept a bouquet of roses from Jorge, a ring on her finger, Sophia's best friend commented on her own post, some people have successfully missed their last chance to make amends, I looked at the picture of Sophia and Jorge embracing, feeling nothing particular, it was like finally having a sharp blade fall after being suspended above my head for so long. I actually felt relieved. I put down my phone and took Diana hiking, eating, and watching a movie. When I dropped Diana off, it was already 10 o'clock on my way home. I received a call. It was Sophia. Clearly drunk. Gabriel, didn't you see the post? Why didn't you react? I laughed. What kind of reaction do you want? Do you want me to congratulate you and send a gift? Sophia paused. Her voice hoarse. Gabriel you're not happy, are you? She said, if you're unhappy, just say the word, and I will. She didn't finish the sentence. I lowered my eyes, mocking, and what? It's not like you're going to refuse Jorge, right? Sophia hesitated, then hesitated again. I laughed out loud, Sophia, if you want my blessing, then you have it. I wish you and Jorge a lifetime of happiness. Don't be conflicted anymore. You can't let him go. Sophia was silent. After a while, just as I was about to hang up, she said, I thought I couldn't let go, but now I'm not sure. Gabriel, I don't know how to choose. When I see you with Diana, it's like there's a fire burning in my heart. I hung up the phone without another word. Disappointment can be recovered from, but despair cannot. My dad was pleased to see that I was no longer moving out or lowering myself for some inexplicable female employee. He encouraged me to start working at the company soon. He suggested I begin by collaborating with Diana. In the meantime, Sophia sent me a message. Gabriel, I regret it. I ignored her and blocked her on every platform, phone, WeChat, Weibo, QQ, Douyin, and Xia Hongshu. I wanted her completely out of my life. Sophia's best friend cursed me on social media, blaming me for driving Sophia crazy. Later, even Jorge called me, Gabriel, you play hard to get very well, but you're just a toy. Sophia will never care about you. After hanging up, I looked at the custom suit my dad had made for me and fell into deep thought. I wondered if Jorge knew that his new boss, arriving tomorrow was named Gabriel. The next day's department meeting included the cooperation department. Jorge and Sofia, both managers, were waiting in the conference room, eagerly awaiting the entrance of the old chairman's son. They were all smiles, waiting for the door to open. And then I walked in. Sofia stood up first. Gabriel, why are you here? Before she could finish, the assistant introduced me respectfully. This is the son of Chairman Chi. You can just call him Gab. From now on, work well with him and perform excellently. Sofia froze. I watched her face turn pale, Gabriel, you are. No wonder she didn't know. I never came to the company or mentioned my background. Being so obedient and easy to please, who would have thought I was my dad's only son? I sat down and motioned for her to sit as well, Manager Lin. Don't be so formal. Sit down and speak. Sophia remained stiff, unable to move. Jorge had to pull her down into her seat, but his face was even darker, almost turning liver-colored. I lowered my head to look at the documents and asked them to report one by one. When it was Sophia's turn, she stammered, and I interrupted, if Manager Lin can't explain it clearly, find someone who can. We were dealing with the empire my father built with great effort, not a place for personal feelings. Jorge did relatively well, except for his trembling hands when opening the documents. Everything else was acceptable. The meeting lasted an hour. After it ended, just as I stepped out of the conference room, Sophia finally seemed to react, chasing after me, Gabriel, you. But she couldn't finish her sentence this time either because Diana was waiting outside my office, holding a bouquet of sunflowers, everything went smoothly. She smiled, and the sunlight streaming in from the window illuminated her and the sunflowers, creating a warm glow. I smiled and accepted them, thank you, come in and sit. Sophia wanted to follow us in but was blocked by the door. Diana sat across from me, arranging the sunflowers, Gab, our collaboration will end next month. She smiled and said, I might not come here as often after that. I suddenly felt a bit lost, I didn't know why. But after thinking about it, I attributed this feeling to relying on her company during my hardest times. I watched her arrange the flowers for a while, then impulsively asked, Can I still visit you, in your city? Diana looked up at me, her eyes twinkling, and after a few seconds, she smiled and looked down, You're welcome anytime. I swallowed hard, suddenly feeling nervous. 
as if there was more I wanted to say, but the office door abruptly opened, interrupting me. I looked over in annoyance to see Sophia barging in, her eyes red, no longer her composed self, are you really cheese only son? I nodded, Diana added with a smile, yes, manager Lin, you've kept chairman Chi's son as a pet for three years, Sophia's face turned even whiter, why didn't you tell me? I looked at her beautifully made up face and realized I could no longer see the little girl she used to be, I closed my eyes, utterly disappointed, and decided not to hide anymore, Sophia. I'm not just family Chi's son. I had another name when I was young. Gab M.O. Thud. Sophia collapsed to the ground, knocking over a teacup in the process. Her hand was cut, bleeding profusely, but she seemed unaware, just staring at me as if she didn't recognize me. After a while, she suddenly seemed to remember something terrifying. What have I done? She seemed to be asking me, or perhaps herself, what have I done? When I was a child, my dad was a second generation wealthy individual, carrying my grandfather's surname. M.O. However, my grandfather became addicted to gambling, squandered the family fortune, and abandoned my grandmother and our family, disappearing without a trace. We fell into poverty, living in the slums, working desperately to pay off debts. I went from being the wealthiest kid in school to the most pitiable, naturally becoming a target for bullying. At that time, there was also a girl named Sophia at school with a disabled father and a mentally ill mother. She too was a target for bullies. The first time I was bullied, Sophia appeared out of nowhere grabbed me, and we ran like the wind. She knew the terrain well and had tricky moves that made it impossible for others to catch us. That was how I met her for the first time. In the days that followed, Sophia and I huddled together for warmth. We got beaten together, fought back together, had our meager lunches stolen together, went hungry together, and begged for food from the small shops together. Later, my dad moved us to another city to start anew, transferring me to a different school. Sophia and I didn't want to be separated and even ran away from home. My dad had to call the police to find us. When we had to part, I promised Sophia that I would come back for her. During the years apart, not a day went by that I didn't think of the girl who shared my hardships. Fortunately, my family eventually made money, and we could return to our hometown. Sadly, my grandmother passed away from overwork. My dad said that since my grandfather abandoned his family, and my grandmother devoted her life to us, we should take her surname. Thus, I changed from Gab M.O. to Gabriel Chi. When we returned, Sophia had just joined my company. She was very capable and hardworking, but she didn't recognize me. As I got close to her, I found that she particularly avoided talking about her childhood and had severed ties with everyone from her past. I hid my past, pursued her diligently, and eventually stood by her side. I thought I had fulfilled my promise, but I never expected that I was just a temporary companion for her. Now, looking at Sophia sitting on the ground, my heart that once loved her felt no ripples but the young Gabriel inside me was crying in grievance. We had promised to be together when we grew up, back then, holding hands. We were closer than anyone, but in the end, it turned out like this. I called for iodine and band-aids, squatted down, and tended to Sophia's wound, applying iodine and a band-aid. I smiled at her, I once thought we would truly fulfill our promise and be together. Tears flowed from Sophia's eyes, her lips trembling, unable to speak, only whimpering, soft and pained, but somehow, we've reached this point. I helped her up and stood, Sophia, we can't go any further, this is the end. Tears streamed down Sophia's face, her beautiful eyes were filled with pain and pleading. After a long while, she finally managed to speak, trembling, if I had known it was you, I would never have treated you that way, it's too late. I opened the office door, Sophia, the best time has passed, now we've reached a dead end. Sophia stood at my office door for a long time that day, crying until she broke down, eventually, she drew my dad's attention. When my dad came down, I was handing Sophia an album, this is the only thing I kept from everything you gave me, now that I think about it, there's no need to keep it anymore, we both need to move forward. Sophia's trembling hands opened the album, looking at the childish drawings of two kids, one getting beaten, the other crying in pain, one running away, the other distracting the pursuers, one holding the other, looking at the sky in silence, on the last day before we parted, the two made a promise to be together in the future. Every stroke of the pen was sincere back then, making the days that followed seem like a joke. Sophia flipped to the last page, and tears fell onto the album. She closed the album, turned, and ran away crying. Her staggering figure, trembling shoulders, overlapped with the little girl who was chased and beaten back then. My dad stood beside me and asked, will you keep her on? I hesitated for a moment, if her performance is good, keep her, if not, let her go. In my heart, I believed in Sophia. The girl who struggled out of the slums, who drastically changed her personality and severed her past, deserved her position. She just didn't keep our childhood promise, but it's okay, 
It's all in the past. I turn to Diana. I'll be going to your place for a business trip this month. Will you welcome me? Diana looked at me quietly. After a while, she handed me a sunflower. Welcome. Jorge resigned. Even if he hadn't, he couldn't face me day after day, taking my orders. However, Sophia had helped him a lot in his career, and after resigning, he struggled to find a suitable job, feeling very frustrated and wanting to return, but I don't go back to the past, nor do I accept others treating me as a fallback, career and love are the same. After that day, Sophia took a leave of absence, she hadn't taken a vacation in years and now took a full month off, a month later, she was waiting for me downstairs at the company, she had lost a lot of weight, her hair had grown out and was untrimmed, and her professional attire was replaced by casual clothes. Still the matching couple style I had bought. Seeing me, she burst into tears without saying a word. Gabriel, this past month, I visited every temple I could, praying for time to reverse. She smiled bitterly. I know it's nonsense, but I couldn't help it. What if there's really a God who hears me? If time could reverse, I'd never treat you this way. I looked at my watch. Sophia, I have to pick someone up for dinner, so let's keep it short. Also, we're very busy with work lately. I suggest not taking leave unless it's for health or family reasons. Sophia was stunned. After a while, she smiled bitterly. So, I have no chance, right? I didn't say anything because I saw Diana. Diana walked over with a smile. I came early to avoid traffic. I reached out my hand to her. Let's go. Let's have dinner early and catch a movie. We walked hand in hand. Forgetting Sophia was still there. From behind came the sound of soft crying. Gabriel, I'm here to resign. I can't face you anymore. Diana stopped and looked at me. Should you talk to her? I shook my head. No need. I turned back to Sophia and smiled sincerely, like when we were kids, Sophia, I agree, I wish you all the best. Turning around, I walked away with Diana, the crying behind us grew louder, eventually turning into wails of regret, but I couldn't look back, there was still a long road ahead for Diana and me to walk together, I held Diana's hand tightly, and she gently squeezed mine in return, this time, neither of us would let go, Sophia's story, chapter 1, I don't like it when people bring up my childhood, it was the most shameful unbearable period of my life, I later worked like crazy, studied like crazy, all to shake off the shadow of my childhood, that shadow of being laughed at and bullied, but the one thing I could never shake off was the smile of a boy, his smile was so sincere, chapter 2, Gab and I gradually became inseparable, going everywhere together, his childish voice solemnly promised me, when I grow up, I'll work hard to make money and marry you, back then, we believed that marriage was the guarantee of never being separated, I matured earlier than he did, I knew it wasn't realistic. Kids like us couldn't afford to like each other. Otherwise, we'd drag each other into hell. But somehow, I still nodded. Okay, I'll wait for you. Even now, when I look back, I don't know why I nodded. Later, Gab had to transfer to another city. He hugged me and cried. I usually followed the principle of avoiding trouble. But that day, something clouded my judgment. Why don't you run away from home? We can survive by picking up trash. Gab nodded heavily and we ran to the outskirts holding hands, walking, we were so naive back then, thinking that our efforts alone could sustain us, but less than a day later, Gab was found by the police, no one came looking for me because my parents hadn't even reported me missing, when the police brought us back and we had to part, Gab cried his heart out, hugging me tightly, Sophia, wait for me, I'll definitely come back for you, by then, I knew that adults often didn't keep their word, let alone children, but when Gab said that, for some reason, I believed him, I didn't cry, but I nodded very seriously, I'll wait for you. Chapter 3, 10 years passed, my father, disabled but a compulsive gambler, would sell family belongings when he lost, finally, he pinned his hopes on me, if you sleep with the dealer for a night, our lives will turn around, he even brought the dealer home to inspect me, but that day my mother had an episode, wielding a kitchen knife, when my mother was lucid, she loved me, she hugged me and said, go, never come back, I took my documents and fled. My mother set our dilapidated home on fire. From then on, I had no home. Chapter 4. I worked desperately hard and got a job at Chi Corporation. Everyone at work knew not to mess with me. I was ruthless with anyone who blocked my path. I had no choice. This instinct was ingrained in me from my childhood experiences. Former classmates heard about my success and tried to cozy up to me, but they didn't realize how vehemently I rejected my past. Anyone who mentioned knowing the old me was immediately cut off without hesitation. That was my shame, my pain, the festering wound no one was allowed to touch. The simple, innocent Sophia of the past was gone. In her place was the current Sophia, devoid of morals, living only for her own pleasure. I drank heavily, partied wildly, and lived recklessly. I pursued Jorge, someone from an intellectual family with a high education. 
like chasing an unattainable dream from my childhood. In my childhood dreams, I was a university professor. Even though I knew Jorge was stringing me along, I was like a donkey chasing a carrot, exhausted but unwilling to give up. Other people pursued me too, including wealthy individuals, but I couldn't stand rich people. Every detail of their extravagance painfully pricked my childhood self-esteem. Crushed into the dust, they didn't know what it meant to lack money, and I didn't know what money was. The deep-seated inferiority complex was impossible to change. So I was strung along by Jorge, wasting my youth, living in a twisted, purposeless state of inferiority. Until one day, at a nightclub, an incredibly handsome boy approached me. He didn't seem good at flirting in a club, awkwardly downing drink after drink, thinking it would impress me. I despised such naivety, not liking this kind of rookie. But that night, I kept him. It wasn't his drinking that moved me. I just saw a familiar shadow in him, a shadow buried deep in my mind, along with my sordid past, a forbidden area no one was allowed to touch. I assumed he was a nightclub salesman. When I took him home, he overheard my drunken phone call with my best friend, cursing those wealthy second-generation rich kids with the harshest words. Then I cursed my former classmates for shamelessly trying to get close to me. I saw him stiffen in the passenger seat. I thought I had scared him, so I laughed and patted his head. Don't worry. I'm not like this in bed. He forced a smile, falling into deep thought. Chapter 5. He told me his name was Gabriel Chi, and that he had no money and no job. Our boss also had the last name Chi. So I joked, go check the family tree. Maybe your distant relatives and can get some help. Gabriel laughed awkwardly. Gabriel was good looking with a great body. And soon enough, I wanted to move in with him. Gabriel was genuinely kind hearted. I gave him cards, bought him things, showered him with luxury goods but he never became materialistic. I even thought he had the potential to be a monk. So calm and unworldly, yet he was so dedicated to me. Even though everyone said I was just playing with him, he was still earnest about our relationship. For three years, people aren't plants, who can be without feelings. Every night I woke up screaming from nightmares about the past. I clung to him. Every time I drank to the point of pain, crying for my mom, Gabriel would rush to me, saying he'd love me in place of my mom. Every time I was consumed with jealousy towards the rich, Gabriel would silently listen to my ugliest thoughts, quietly patting my back. Three years went by, and I told everyone I was just having fun, but deep down, I knew it wasn't true. I had developed feelings for him too. I even thought about making Gabriel an administrator or something and then marrying him. But just in the third year, when I decided to settle down, Jorge came back. When I welcomed Jorge back, I didn't invite Gabriel. But Jorge still saw Gabriel's photo from my best friend and sneered, he's quite good looking. I smiled and said nothing. Within days, Jorge requested a transfer back to headquarters, working closely with me, asking for my help with his work. I agreed. Jorge was pleased and jokingly said, kick that poor boy out. It's time to settle down. I frowned at the term poor boy. I didn't like anyone being described as poor. I especially didn't like Gabriel being described that way. But this was Jorge. Marrying him would allow me to integrate into an intellectual family, and my children could become university professors in the future. The misery and inferiority of my childhood had long twisted into a bloodthirsty beast in my heart, sharp and fierce, devouring all my feelings and conscience. I wanted to completely erase the imprint of my past and become a new person, a Sophia who annihilates the past. Chapter 6 Those few days, I couldn't look at Gabriel. I didn't even dare to speak much. Gabriel thought I was under too much pressure and even wanted to buy a cat to relieve my stress. He made soup for me, invited me to go hiking, being cautious and caring. I thought and thought, and decided I had to get drunk to talk to Gabriel. I called my best friend and Gabriel to sing karaoke, drinking recklessly. Whiskey stung my nose, making me cough and tear up. When I got drunk, I lay in Gabriel's arms and laughed. We're done. I think my years of harsh self-training paid off. I had become an emotionless creature with only goals. I said it just like that. Watching Gabriel's eyes go from bright to dull under the lights of the private room, I thought he would beg me to reconsider. For a moment, I even hoped he would. I felt that if he asked, I might really reconsider. But he just stood up quietly, nodded, and turned to leave, as if the three years of companionship and dependence meant nothing to him. I was instantly furious. Jorge had said he suspected I had genuine feelings for Gabriel and told me to push him to our new major client to reassure him. We had heard that this new client had recently gone through a breakup and was in a vulnerable state. This suggestion was for our benefit. Given my ruthless nature, I would have agreed without hesitation. But that day, I actually hoped Gabriel would beg me not to break up. Then I might have reconsidered Jorge and definitely wouldn't have pushed Gabriel to someone else. But Gabriel showed no reluctance. It stung my heart. I smiled and handed him the room card, go accompany the client, and big sister will give you a breakup fee. Gabriel had already reached the door, the hallway light illuminating his face. 
I saw a flash of pain in his eyes, but this made me happy. At least he was hurting for me. Chapter 7. I thought I was mentally prepared, but I never expected that seeing Gabriel and Diana together would hurt me so much. It felt like an invisible hand was squeezing my heart, its nails digging into the flesh, twisting, twisting until it was bloody and mangled. This pain exceeded my tolerance. Even though I was known for my endurance and patience, I disregarded the client's thoughts and rushed over to question Gabriel, even though I no longer had the right to question him. For the first time, the usually gentle Gabriel looked at me coldly and told me I had no right to interfere in his life. He sneered, or are you planning to give up on Jorge? I thought I would shake my head without hesitation. Who wouldn't choose Jorge? But at that moment, I hesitated. Reason constantly told me that Jorge was the only choice to completely break away from my past. But there was a voice in my heart lamenting, can you let go of Gabriel? Can you bear to? How can you bear to? I grew up in the worst of environments. I had long been accustomed to making rational choices. At that moment, I cried and said I couldn't let go of Jorge. The voice in my heart sighed long and deep, seemingly foreseeing the future pain and loneliness. Chapter 8 after Gabriel left, I had nightmares every day. In every nightmare, a group of people chased me relentlessly, relentlessly, relentlessly. A figure was always beside me, fleeing with me, but I couldn't see his face. Every night, I woke up crying, habitually reaching out, searching for Gabriel beside me, but I couldn't find him. More than once, I sat in a daze until dawn, repeatedly telling myself that I would forget eventually. Just like childhood, wanting to forget will eventually lead to forgetting but I despairingly found that this time was different. Gabriel was different. I couldn't forget. When I saw Gabriel coming to the company to pick up Diana, panic, jealousy, and pain overwhelmed me. I even wanted to rush over and grab Gabriel, begging him to reconcile in front of Diana. Seeing him drive away in his sports car made me even more panicked. I feared that if he was happy with Diana, he wouldn't come back. I called Gabriel, telling him that Diana was just playing with him and not to take it seriously. But God knows, I had no good intentions. I just couldn't stand the thought of Gabriel looking at another woman with those eyes. But Gabriel replied calmly, weren't you just playing with me too? I was stunned. I had nothing to say. Yes. What right did I have to teach Gabriel how to see through people? Wasn't I the one who treated him the worst? That day, Jorge proposed to me, and I dazedly agreed. I knew I had no way out. Jorge was my only option, but my heart still lamented. Lamented that I had lost something important. Leaving a piece of my heart missing. An empty void. Chapter 9. I imagined countless identities for Gabriel, a nightclub salesman, a gigolo, a minor actor, or even a waiter, but I never imagined that Gabriel would be the heir to Chi Corporation. When he entered the meeting room, I was stunned. I was shocked because my instincts told me my career was in jeopardy, but after the shock, another kind of fear set in, an indescribable fear. It felt like the greatest pain of my life was about to descend upon me. I was terrified so terrified that I disregarded my dignity and chased after Gabriel to his office. I even begged him to look at me once more. If he looked at me again, would he remember that he once loved me? But he didn't look at me. He was looking at Diana, with the same gaze he once had for me. I never imagined that seeing Gabriel look at another woman so tenderly would hurt me so intensely. The pain was so severe that I clutched my chest and could hardly stand. But it's okay, I told myself. After climbing up for so many years, there's nothing I can't endure. But the next second, Gabriel told me he was Gab M.O. I couldn't take it anymore. The moment Gab Mo's name appeared, I heard a loud bang in my mind. Boom. It was the high walls I had built, burying those memories tightly. Those cruel, embarrassing, painful memories all surged out, and at the deepest part of the ruins stood a little boy, quietly looking at me. We promised to be together. Did you forget? Chapter 10. I fell and cut my hand. Blood flowed out, covering my hand, but I didn't care. I stared at Gabriel. Finally remembering why he looked so familiar. The lament in my heart turned into a wail. I warned you. I clearly warned you. Tears unknowingly covered my face. The pain was so intense that I couldn't stand. My childhood support. My teenage hope. The only beautiful memory in my ugly past. The only pure existence. I treated him like a toy. Played with him until I was done. And then threw him away. I suddenly remembered that after breaking up with Gabriel. I found all the cards in the drawer and all the gifts in the closet. But the only thing missing was my sketchbook. The sketchbook I told him to throw away. Which he picked up like a treasure and kept carefully. That sketchbook contained the warm details of our childhood. And now, Gabriel had returned that precious sketchbook to me. Severing our last connection, I covered my face, sobbing uncontrollably. Gabriel applied iodine and bandaged my wound. He sighed, Sophia, we've really reached the end. I seemed to hear him sighing too, during all those days I waited. If you had turned back even once, we wouldn't be here now. Suddenly, I had no strength left to respond. 
I had fought for more than ten years, never giving up easily on anything. As long as I could speak, I could defend myself, but at this moment, I had no strength left. I could fail anyone, but I couldn't fail Gab M.O. This was the thing that broke me the most. It drained all my strength. Chapter 11. Later, I took a month's leave. I visited temples, praying for a chance to turn back time. This seemed to be my only solace to keep living. But after a month, time still marched forward. My despair grew day by day, as did my longing for Gabriel. I couldn't resist going to see him. He was impeccably dressed in a suit, smiling, looking very happy. I suddenly realized that it was a happiness I had never seen before. A happiness I had never given him. I knew I should let him go. Let him stay this happy. But I still couldn't accept it. I really, really missed my M.O. My Gabriel. The only person in the world. Apart from my mom. Who had ever been good to me. And he had been good to me twice. I begged Gabriel to give me another chance. But he interrupted me. Smiling as he looked ahead. I turned my head and saw Diana standing there. She was wearing a beige dress. Standing in the sunlight. Gentle and bright. Her smile pierced me. It was a smile that I living in the shadows, could never possess. The long-lost inferiority complex surged back. I retreated into the corner, watching Gabriel and Diana walk away hand in hand, savoring the excruciating pain of being consumed by jealousy. At this moment, I understood that I had lost all my chances. It was time for me to exit. I quit my job. I used to be someone who only wanted to climb up. But overnight, I lost my spirit. I broke off my engagement with Jorge. Jorge once asked me, is it because I can't find a job now that you look down on me? I shook my head. No, it's because I looked down on myself. I went back to my alma mater and opened a small convenience store nearby. The store faces the playground, where Gab and I used to sit and watch the stars. Back then, little Gab would point at the sky and say, Sophie, my Aries is here, and your Scorpio is over there. I didn't know if he was pointing correctly, but I followed along, they're not far apart. Which means Aries and Scorpio are good friends and will never be separated. Gab scratched his head and laughed, just like us. We'll never be apart. I watched the stars from the playground while running my small store. To this day, I still can't tell which is Aries and which is Scorpio, but it doesn't matter. As long as they're the stars that Gabriel and I looked at together. As long as I still have those memories. Later, I remained alone for the rest of my life. Gabriel often appeared in the news online. He and Diana got married and had a son and a daughter. His business grew bigger and bigger, and he matured. No longer the shy boy who once courted me. Once, a reporter gossipingly asked him, have you only ever loved your wife? I saw him pause for a second, then smile and nod. Yes, I covered my face and wept. That year, I was 50 years old. That year, I had finally learned to tell Aries from Scorpio, but it was too late. For the rest of my life, I would never see my Gabriel, my boy, again.